Brother Ron, he preached a message. I know it's inspired by God in this South Korean mission. Many people there. And he said, take a second look at the cross. Amen. Praise God. Like you may have your had your religion and you've thought of God in a certain way and Jesus in a certain way, but we need to wake up to the real cross. Woo! This real Jesus is a miracle worker. This real Jesus is delivers the captives. Yes. Thank you, Lord. He can take that drug addict out of the street yes. as my brother once was. Yes. yes. Amen. And a lot of the people that I know, I, I hang with bad people. Bad people. They're good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Righteous by the blood of Christ. Yes. And the Lord dealt with me, and I testify this about every place we go, is before I'm coming, you know, what? the last time we came, Brother Ron broke his hand, and the Lord instantly, by the time he got to the doctor, and healed it. Amen. I had this mole grow, and I it started a big old mole had been on my arm the whole life, Jesus. and it started rising up. And I had a cousin back when I did martial arts, and we were going to fight against each other in, in this. They call it the Battle of Atlanta, which was a big tournament, karate tournament, and they. We were about to fight, but we never made it that far. Praise God. Let's put it that way. Praise we never made it to that match. And I said, man, my cousin ain't going to beat me. You know, I, I got to win this. You know, <laughs> takes his legs out, do whatever. <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've got to win this. But we never met. But I hate to say that it, my daddy called me. And, and he, the boy was about 19 then. But by the time next year came around, he was dead. Mm -hmm. He had this melanoma, mm -hmm. just a little cancer on the skin. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that mole rising up and I showed it to my wife, I said, look at this. I said, this isn't good. Mm -hmm. I immediately thought of my cousin. Mm -hmm. And that mole was a pretty big. It was kind of flat. It was rising up. And, and I, I, was, <laughs> I was in the bathroom and, and I sat down. I, think, I thought to myself, I'm going to start anointing this with oil. I heard of another man of God anointing something like that with the oil and I said I, because I, I kind of had a lot of confidence that it was probably that uh, melanoma it was some kind of cancer or something and I was really worried about it and so I told my wife she's the only one and I showed it to her and she saw it praise God and I fortunately it was on the back of my arm I didn't have to look at it every day it like wasn't on my face and, and uh and, and uh, so I kind of forget about it, but then I would anoint it. And one day, so many days later, I, I, it started, uh, I said, well, boy, it doesn't feel as big as it was. And, and I kept going a day or two, and a few days later, and I felt it, and I said, man, it really feels like it's getting really flat. And I wouldn't even look at it. I wouldn't look at it. And it kept going a few more days. I don't know if it was three weeks, five weeks, something like that. And I felt, and I felt, and I said, I don't feel anything there. Mm, thank so I got my courage up. Mm. And I went went to the mirror, and I looked. And that, since I was a young boy, I saw it, was disappeared. Yeah. The whole mold disappeared. So he really set us up with some faith going into the going into the meetings that year. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Because Jesus wants to be real, real. today. Real. I mean today. today. We put him off too much. Yeah. He's always in the distance. Oh, we love the stories of the Bible. How Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got out of that, out of that fiery furnace. We love the stories of Samson. We love the stories of Moses yeah. crossing the Red Sea. Glory. But we need that same God today. Yeah. We need that Jesus Christ alive today. If he's not the same yesterday, today, and forever, then we need to give it up. Amen. Come on. Start over. He better be. Better Hallelujah. Be. Hallelujah. And he's going to have to be that same Jesus in your life for you to survive what's coming. You say, well, what's coming? Have you noticed anything? Have <laughs> you? <laughs> Have you seen anything going on? Mm. Praise God. Does it seem like things are getting worse? Yeah, Does it seem like you, 20 years ago 
you never believed uh, uh, people one sex after the same sex it would be just fine, great thing, mm-hmm. a wonderful thing. You said, "What? What are you talking about?" Mm-hmm. Praise God, Jesus put men and women together. Yes. A man, Jesus didn't say anything about any crossbreeds no. or anything like that. He said, "A woman with a man, and they would become what one." one. One. Is that what Jesus said? Well, well, wait a minute. My social mind tells me blah, blah, blah. You better get rid of your social mind because you're being perverted by Satan. That's right. The word is the word. It was written about all through history. I don't know why I'm getting on this. <laughs> Praise God. But didn't we just say somebody got arrested? Just stop preaching about that. <laughs> Praise God. That somebody got arrested, but if that bondage is trying to take you, Jesus loves you. Thank you, Lord. If, if that iniquity, Amen. you said, well, "Man, you're talking bad. You're talking that hate speech." I'm just talking the Bible. Amen. Yes. Amen. The Bible, John one. I mean, what is it? Praise God. Romans one talks about man with man working that which is unseen, See, and women with women losing their natural affection. Mm-hmm. Praise God. It talks all about how God's going to destroy that. But praise God, then he turns right around and says, you better not be judging all these people condemning. Yeah, that's right. yeah. <laughs> because you, you, you do something. <laughs> you may not be doing that and you may not be shooting somebody, but you probably talked about your neighbor. <laughs> you probably lied on something somewhere uh-huh. just to make it more advantageous uh-huh. even on your income tax you did something <laughs> and you're guilty you're guilty of one you're guilty of all yeah. isn't that something Woo! Jesus turns that right around Woo! says you better quit condemning folks you say well, are you condemning no the word is the word yeah. See, we go by the word. We live by the word. Yeah. And praise God, if you don't live by the word, you're going to one day be judged by the word. Right now, we can judge ourselves. Brother, when some little nasty thing comes up in our life, and we retaliate, slap for slap, and we do something, we do something of evil, you know, and we something comes up, you know, Jesus is showing us something inside. Oh. He wants to purify. No, but no more do they preach holiness or hell. No, the highway is a highway of holiness. It's a highway of righteousness. No unclean thing will walk there. Jesus Christ came to this earth to, to save the lost. And we were those people. Now I can say that I'm under the blood. And that's why the blood is so hated. I mean, actually, the other, even in church the other day, I was singing the blood. Two people just ran out. They were going to attend service. He said, what is that? The devil hates the blood. Amen. Because if you're saved, the only way you're saved is not only believing in Jesus' name, and believing in the cross, but you've got to see that blood as that lamb sacrifice. Right. Praise God. If you don't, I don't care how good at two shoes you are, and you don't curse, and you don't lie, you don't steal, you don't shoot up. Praise God. You're going to go to hell because the blood of Christ yes, Lord. is our only salvation. Yes, Lord. That yes, Lord. is the righteousness of God. Yes. Yes. Our righteousness. It's like we're so good, except I do this or do that, except um, you know you you allow for ourselves because we're us. We favor ourselves. Praise God! But at the same time, I'm not preaching condemnation. I'm saying repent, repent. When you come across something, and we all do, we come across something that rises up in us. Some anger, some something. We want justice right now. We want the justice. We would like to be the executor of that justice. (laughs) (laughs) I know I'm so bad at that. And you know, I I know you think I'm just a nice, wonderful person now. But I... (laughs) Bad little dude. That that guy was a bad little dude. And, And you know, come to think of it, we all probably were kind of bad. See, I was raised in church. I knew not to commit adultery. I knew not to do
do this, do that, and not supposed to lie, did my best not to steal. But, but you know, later on the Lord showed me, yes, you lied here, you lied there. You, you thought you did. But, but I was raised good, and that's a big, sometimes it's a, a big uh, a blessing to be raised in church to know about Jesus. But when it's not the real thing, if it's not the real thing, yeah. I mean down to the brass tacks of following Jesus, taking up your cross yeah. and begin to follow him and love Jesus with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Yeah. Love that God with all that heart, mind, soul, and strength. Yeah. So you, a lot of us would give our heart and mind. We don't give our strength. We just sit there. <laughs> but the Lord wants to renew your strength. Amen. Praise Those God. that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew, brother, yes. renew yes. your strength. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Sometimes we all get weak. Yes. I went through a 20 year trial that I didn't know if I would come out of it. But thank God I was waiting upon the Lord. I said, Lord, I can't have seen blind eyes open and deaf ears. And seen the miracles of God. And felt your holy presence. And been washed by your blood. Just to go and get old and die. Right. And I'm almost 70 now. But praise God. Lord's put a fire on me. I've got life. Mm. I've got this life. It's, people think I'm mad. But I'm not mad. <laughs> Just this is the word. God's word is like a hammer. God's word, and it comes through different people, different ways. Mm -hmm. Sister Sue, I, I know I've seen her a little riled up. I've seen her kind of get feisty in, but mainly she's sweet and nice. My wife say what? It's sweet and nice. But me and Brother Ron, we we hammer this word. It's just the way God works through us. That don't mean He can't break my spirit. Don't mean He can't uh, chill me and make me just tender. Because he is tender. He is loving. He does care about your problems. He does see your head hanging down. Praise God. He is a loving Christ to all people. Hallelujah. Praise God. We, we just love Jesus and thank God. I'm just so pleased to be anywhere. <laughs> I'm, I'm just tickled to be here. Say, Why? They won't let you preach anywhere, brother. No, 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 that's not it. But we preach to the poor. We love to go to the streets. We go to the demon possessed people. We're going out there where it's a little bit dangerous. But praise God, we're just warming up for what's ahead. Hallelujah. Because this gospel. You say, what gospel you mean? Are you a Baptist, your method, or your blah, blah, blah? No, I'm none of that stuff. Amen. But I will believe in God's whole word. Yes. The whole thing. Yes. You know, they yeah. used to have a commercial out Lay's potato chips. Yeah. You said you can't stop. You got to eat the whole thing. And yeah. you keep eating those Lay's potato chips until the whole bag was gone. And you got to eat the whole word. Jesus said, drink, take the cup and drink it all. Glory. And it's sweet in the mouth and bitter in the belly. Meaning it's a glorious thing. The anointing of Jesus is addictive. You just crave it. I never was a drug person. But I, I, I had desires and things. But you crave the anointing of God. You just want more and more. Because I want to see more and more people come to follow Jesus. In spirit and truth. In spirit and truth. I want to see more and more people go the way. You say the way of a fanatic. Oh, praise God. Well, maybe so. When you're talking about being like Jesus. You say, well, why, why can't I just be this? Uh -huh. It's not me. That's right. He's the one. Yes. He's the one compelling us to be like himself. Yes. But what, what do you think? He chose you to be a frog? Praise God. Or just be a, a, some wild maniac? Praise God. Or, or a sweet little thing that just never says a word about Jesus. Yeah. Praise God. It's our duty. Amen. It's our duty. Yeah. And I have a I do have some Bible. Where is my Bible here? <laughs> Praise God. I do have some Bible. And the Lord gave it to me. And and praise his name. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. You know, we're constantly just eating this flesh and drinking this blood, mm -hmm. constantly reading the word and seeking it. And, and a lot of times, you know, you know that's what he said. I, I, but when he brings you before, they said they'll bring you before councils mm -hmm. and judges. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll bring you before courts. like. You know? And he said, in that hour, don't premeditate what you'll say. And, and, I, and I, I confess, none of this is premeditated. I confess that what my wife just preached, that Sister Sue said, none of it is a little program figured out. We are doing everything we can to speak by the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. To let the Lord speak. Because we don't, I, I say it again and again, Brother Ron don't like it, I don't like it, but we don't know how to preach. I do not know how to preach. You learn more, like the brother said, about that cloud. Mm -hmm. That cloud. When the cloud moved, the people moved. Mm -hmm. Praise God. That's it, bro. You hit on the, right on the target. Hallelujah. Brother Georgie here is a blessing to my life. Ever since I ever met him, I don't see him very much. That he has been a blessing to me. And right in there with Jesus. You know, some of us have the cause of Jesus. Some preachers and ministers, many, are building their own kingdom. Oh, yeah. kingdom. Their own kingdom. You hear what I said? What, what does that mean? Your, your religious kingdom. Oh, send in your dollars to me. I get this little bottle of water. Just get this or that. You say, well, aren't they of God? I don't know. You have to figure that out. Yeah. Hallelujah. You have to figure that out. But praise God, there's a people God is raising up. They're not going to be those servants that when the people came around, God sent somebody there that they beat them and killed them or sent them away. Praise God. There's a people God is raising up that are going to build the kingdom of God. Thank you. Are you going to be one of those people? Amen. Praise God. In the Jesus ministry, you're losing your own ministry. Right. You have a ministry, but it's a ministry of reconciliation. Yes. If you want to be in the Jesus army, you're going to have to die to yourself. Lose your ministry. Lose your reputation. Yes. Lose what you got. Yes. Glory to God. That Christ can live in you. Yes. That you can obtain the kingdom of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Indeed. Hosanna. Praise God, Jesus. You, you know, you know uh, we talk about this a lot. Satan was above the throne of God. The most beautiful angel. Very religious. He had the music. A lot of us have come from some of that honky tonk. Wild drug, what do you say, Brother Ron? Drug. Hippie dope smoke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dope smoking music yeah, I remember I was a kind of good boy I didn't go for a lot of that but but praise God it's still I was just lost as a coon lost as a coot or lost as a person you know, can be praise Jesus but I want you to tell you about some responsibilities I'm going to talk about hmm Responsibility. I can find the thing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 38. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to tell you something about uh, your responsibility and mine. You know, a preacher or a man of the cloth, as they say, whatever we are, the word, when it goes out, it comes right back. It's the two-edged sword. Now, if I preach to you the cross, and I go live in sin, if I've got a second woman on the side over here, you got a second man, two or three, are doing something like that, then, you know, those preachers, if they don't get right, they will burn in hell. 
Those people are doing it for filthy lucre. Yes. Meaning money. Yeah. Just it, it's a business. <laughs> they make a business. Merchandise, yeah. Make merchandise of you. Just send in your tithes, just send in your offerings, blah blah blah. You're gonna get this back and you'll get a Mercedes or something. If God blesses you, brothers and sisters, He's going to bless you for the gospel's sake. Yes, sir. And you're going to use your income yes. Yes. and your means to help promote Him. That's He'll right. give you some for yourself. He can even bless you with a house or something. Praise God, I believe that. But He wants you to take the Word of God. Yes. Not some doctrine. And I said it the other day, He's not going to... The, the Bible says we'll, we'll all stand before it's appointed unto what a man wants to, to die, die. And then the judgment will stand before the king. Jesus, the glorified Jesus. Glory. With the, the eyes burning like fire, like coals. Woo. And that glorified body. He won't come as a lamb this time. No. Amen. But you'll stand before him as the king of kings. Glory to and God. the Lord of lords. We'll stand yeah. naked before him. That's right. Naked and judged for the deeds done in our body. And one thing, when I get there, I want to be clothed with a white garment. I want to be clothed with that wedding garment. That he won't say, what are you doing in here without your wedding garment? Didn't I go to church? Didn't I, Lord, but I did not uh, cast out devils. Didn't I do? It's, you know, you got to be a pretty good Christian casting out devils. And, and healing the sick and doing all that. Praise God. But he said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Because we didn't have the love of God. Right. Amen. And one thing the love of God will do is compel you to speak to the king about the king to others. Speak about Jesus to others. If you don't promote his kingdom. Yeah. Praise God. If you're a branch that's not bearing some fruit. Yeah. I'm asking God, give me some fruit on my Self before I die. I got to have some fruit. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, and I'm going to try to read this quickly. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, this is Ezekiel 33. Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, when I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set them for their watchmen, if when he seeth the sword coming upon the land, meaning war, War coming on the land. He blow the trumpet and warn the people. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword comes and take him away, his blood shall be on his own head. In other words, he was warned that something's coming. And this war is coming. And I'm warning you, I'm warning you today that great tribulation great. is coming. Great, great tribulation. And hardship and persecution of Christians is coming. Great persecution. And you got to be armed with the whole armor of Christ. Hallelujah. With his love, we're going to have to be talk about love. We've got to be saturated with his love. But the love of God sometimes isn't the way you think it is. But it compels you to get out of your stool do nothing. Get off your seat. And do something Amen. for Christ. Amen. And testify. Amen. And speak his word yeah. to your neighbor that doesn't know the Lord. Yeah. And to bring forth his kingdom. Amen. People are waiting around. And some people believe in revival. And this revival is coming before the end. But they're waiting for some great preacher to come. Yeah. But it's you. <laughs> it's you. Hallelujah. You that have been sick. And waiting for the Lord to come. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's, he's on his way. Hallelujah. I know you have him, but he's on his way. Because we've got to get a rebirth. Yes, Lord. There's got to be a rebirth of our Re relationship with Christ. Yeah. You know, I, I, I read this Fire. thing years ago. Rebirth of the nation. There's got to be this. Uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln said there's, there's got to be a rebirth. Of the nation. We've got to have a rebirth. Revival is not just a tent somewhere. Or, or some people getting together. And having a big singing. And we all sing wonderful songs. Praise God. But it's a rebirth of the souls of men. To come forth in the spirit of, of Jesus Christ. Oh hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. He took the sound. He he heard this man that his blood's on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. In other words, you got to prepare. You got a preparation of the gospel of peace. Yeah, yeah. You got to get yourself shod. Read it, read it. Breastplate of righteousness. Yeah. Helmet of salvation. Woo. Shield of the spirit. Oh, you sound nice. kind of flower. Mm -hmm. It is. It is tough. Wow. Serving the Lord. Yes. <laughs> and, and and you know, you know, Brother Ron, the other day I was so proud of him and Jesus in him that we were in this mission, street mission. And man, we preached Sister Pat was right in their faces, right out there. I mean, drug dealers and prostitutes. One lady had just a sleeping bag. She was in her panties, sleeping bag, walking around with it. All manner of evil. All manner of evil. And Sister Pat was preaching boldly. I got up and preaching, and I even climbed on the tables, getting in their face. Praise God. But but not just to trying to be a big shot, but preaching the gospel. Preaching. Penetrating those demons. Penetrating. And the demons were crying out everywhere. And people riled up. And this one lady, she, uh, I, don't, I think she was a, a woman. <laughs> okay. She might have been a cross. But I don't know what she was. She was big. And, and she was like cursing us and shooting us the finger and everything. And, and, and uh, anyway, Brother Ron's time came. And we don't have a schedule, but his time is going to come. Because praise God, he's got a word in him. Lord. He's got a word. Thank you, Jesus. That's what I love, the word. Praise God and the spirit and power of it. And anyway, he got he got them uh, preaching. And that lady, we saw it in the film later. I would might, might have tackled her or something before, but I, thank God I didn't see her. Praise God, she's coming out like this, and he's turning his back. He turns around, and he's anointing with her, or, or, his oil, and he's about to anoint you. Bam! <laughs> smacked, him, wow. smacked him in the head and he just turned the other cheek like the Bible says and she she started ski down and he was finding the devil and, and she was out. fleeing yeah. out of there getting yeah. out of there yeah. trying to get some reinforcements because all the back alley was full of people shooting it was up full. and doing stuff yeah. hallelujah you say why would you go like that You can, how can you have church we were having church yes yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite place. Yes, sir. We, but man, people were getting prayed for and delivered oh, yeah. and prayed for and people that look absolutely hopeless. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I'll pick out a person that looks just absolutely the not a chance this person could come out. But Jesus loves them. Amen. Jesus cares about them. Jesus wants them. And praise God. Anyway, we minister to all kind of people after that. And the devil had a black eye. Brother Ron, I didn't see any ill effect upon him. Praise God. And he took it like a Christian. Praise God. And, and, and if you knew us, we're, we weren't good people. Hallelujah. We're still not good. But Jesus is living in us. Hallelujah. And I was really proud of the, the Lord in him and there and he took it and just like didn't phase anything. We we ministered the more. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Taking places for the Lord. Yes. So we want to see these souls won. Yeah. I mean a slam dunk. I want to see see them just set free and then serving the Lord. And and there were people that helped in that mission there that were that were uh, ex drug addicts and all kind of things. And praise the Lord. One young man had a cross on him. Looked like a, I forgive the expression, middle class kid. I wonder what are you doing here? You know, what are you doing in this place? But he was he was there, and he got prayer, I set free, and the Lord is doing something in the streets and the lanes and the highways and hedges. And what he's waiting for for us to the lady that's next door to you, the person you meet, yes, wherever. For you to start getting in your prayer closet. You know, I hate to say it, but there's a word called fasting. Yeah. <laughs> can you stop so, that? <laughs> I can. 
It's a word called fasting. And the Lord's, you know, I, I, and I want to quote the scripture because it says in the word, they came up to Jesus and they said, Master, we don't see your disciples fast. The disciples of the Pharisees, the disciples of, the, uh, uh, of John the Baptist, they fast. But you guys are slack. Like, what, what is the deal with you? What kind of dedication do you got? And he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. They'll get to it. He said, well, as long as the bridegroom himself is with them, they're not going to fast. This is the bridegroom. I'm, I'm the king. You know, I'm coming here. I am the Savior. But he said, when the bridegroom is taken away, then shall my disciples, who? Disciples. What are we supposed to be? Disciples. 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 Oh, no, I was a Baptist, sir. I was a... Uh-uh. It didn't, say, <laughs> didn't mention anything. No. I don't see that. No. Church of God. Or Pentecostal. Yeah, that's right. I don't see any of that. We follow Jesus Christ right. and His Word. Yes. You know, the Bible says the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And later on it says, but He was with us. He, he was the Word made flesh. Amen. Jesus Christ was the Word made flesh. Amen. Likeness of sinful flesh. And, and was the Son of Man, born of a virgin, born of woman. Therefore, He was a man. He had flesh and bone. was tempted in all points as we. Tempted. In every way. Now how. You can think of the ways you're tempted. Mm -hmm. Jesus was tempted that way. And I would say much more. Can you imagine the pressure. Upon him. Because if he fell. Glory. Or if he even said. Uh, Angels come rescue me. Let's go ahead and put Satan in hell right now. And all of us be lost. Yeah. Praise God. But he did not fail. He's the captain of our salvation. Lord, He's Lord, the forerunner, the firstborn of what? Many Amen. brethren. Amen. So when, when we talk about the sons of God, and you think you're trying to elevate yourself to some kind of great thing, and you're really, you know, some kind of exalted thing, it's Jesus that wants us to be that. Yes. Yes. I would probably settle for a rocking chair, maybe. <laughs> there ain't no rocking chair for me I, I'll be 70 October the 3rd and I'm not even close to needing a rocking chair I'm still climbing trees in my business and, and I'm not trying to brag I want Jesus to get the glory because I could just fall apart any second or be killed <laughs> and so I'm giving him the glory and because don't you feel it the tiredness Yes. So many people, you feel it. Some of the ministers we minister to, the tiredness, we feel it. Yeah. It's worn out. And we're kind of going night and day because we work and preach. And we're preaching frequently. Yes. Even back home, in the streets. We, we had a 50-day meeting. In the streets, in the cold. Yeah. And, and you think we don't get tired? But you said this spirit of slumber to make you asleep. Yes. Just drain. You feel that draining? Yeah. It just drains your strength, yeah. drains your energy, drains you. So all you feel like is sitting on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> Watching TV. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But God's going to raise up an army. Yeah. And I feel like there's some of that army here. Yes. And he's Fire. calling you. Fire. He's Fire. calling you. Fire. I said he's calling you. Fire. Calling you. Calling you. Are you going to come? Yeah. Are you going to come to Jesus? Are you going to Oh, well, I was saved 50 years ago. It's not talking about that. You haven't finished your course. Yeah, that's right. yeah. You haven't finished what God has for you. Hallelujah. And I'm, I'm trying to read this. You, Lord. Praise God. Where? Praise God. And, and this is the man that heard the sound. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be on his own hands, shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, 
and the people be not armed. Now I know this watchman Ezekiel was a prophet. And he was a real, you know, he was the big watchman. But I'm telling you, I'm proclaiming to you this day that you are supposed to be like a watchman. When you come to the knowledge of the truth, when you come to the light, and you see the light, and Jesus is the light, and when you hear his word, and he, you know that he called you to be a disciple, not a bitch warmer, not sitting on the pew or the seat, just sitting. Yes, we need to assemble ourselves together. The more as that day approaches, wherever it may be, in a home, in a church, wherever. Yes, you need to come more often probably. So you can gain that strength. And when you're going through a battle, and when the enemy is trying to discourage you and tear you down with sickness, disease, your children, your, your family, your husband, your whatever. And he's trying to destroy you through them. Praise God. It, you can get some strength from each other. Yes. It says, by this shall you know that you're my disciples if you love one, one another. Yeah, that's right. And that's when you care about her and she's got a big problem and you really go in this earnest prayer earnest. about it for your brother, for your sister. In a way, that's a way of laying down your life yes. for your brother. That's part of it. We're laying down our lives when we intercede. God wants some intercessors. Lay down your life one to another, one for another. And that's where friends did. Isn't that what Jesus did for us? Amen. Laid it all down. All down. Man, he, he was like, he was much more than Moses. But remember, Moses was a top guy. Mm. Might have been Pharaoh. I don't know all the details. He might have been the next Pharaoh. But he was a top guy in the kingdom of Egypt. I mean, he had what everyone, he had the women, the wealth, the gardens, the boat rides. He could have his own vote on the Nile. Praise God, a, a townhouse or some kind of plot, you know, thing on the Nile. Anything he wanted, yes. it's the flesh. Yes. He could have had it. Right. Jesus had everything. Uh, right. And he gave it up. Yes. To go to a cross. Yes. Even the death of the cross. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Mm. That, that is the love of God. That is that love. Praise God. Praise you, Jesus. He says, he, <laughs> read the whole thing again. I'm double reading, I, forgive me, but maybe it'll penetrate our minds a little bit. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the who? The watchman. The Christian that wouldn't tell his neighbor about Jesus. Wouldn't warn him of the wrath of God, which is hell. One thing spurred me on is I feel the hand of the Lord upon me and pulling me to him and pulling me to do my duty, to do it in the all love. You know, he said, return to your first love. Yeah. This I have somewhat against yes, you. Yeah. You don't have that zeal and that thrill yeah. and that excitement Religious and that too. joy Amen. and that love and that compassion for people like when you first got saved. Praise God, you went out to everybody. I did. I went to the street fighters. I went to my college professors. I went to my preacher, a Baptist preacher, and, and the superintendent. I went to the meanest people. I went to my best friends. I went. I had to give up martial arts after a few months. I gave it up because I just wasn't. My psyche couldn't handle Jesus and. And That's smacking right. people in the head That's wanting to kill them, you know. <laughs> Praise God, I couldn't handle that. <laughs> it was two different things, you know. We, we try, so many people try to add Jesus to their own lifestyle. Oh, well, I'll keep having parties and drink a little, but I love the Lord on Sunday. I love the Lord, and man, I got Jesus in my hip pocket. But I, you know, I like to nip a little bit, smoke a little Dope a little or do something, you know. 
Even prescription drugs is so yes, right. rampant. It's yeah. destroying the people. It is. Right. We don't have God come to prayer of faith deliver the people anymore. But a little bit of drugs uh, to appease us and ease the pain. Well, I, I'm not just preaching against that. But I'm saying Jesus wants to be our doctor. Glory. He yes. really wants to be our miracle worker. Yes. Yes. He wants to be real to us. Yes. And there's coming a time... Just like you won't be able to buy or sell without the name of the number or the mark of the beast in your forehead or your hand. Right. That you won't be able to go to the hospital either. Right. Right. And it's coming. Right. It's coming. Right. Praise God. Always you say, oh, is the coming of the Lord near? Well, they said that back in the 1700s. They said it in the 1800s. They said it in the 1900s. We're saying it now. But I'll tell you one thing. There's some things that have happened like Jerusalem being regathered from all these oh, after thousands of years, right. Israel being a becoming a country, yeah. as Amen. that had to happen Sorry, before Jesus would come. Heavenly. But you know, the main thing that has to happen before Jesus comes, it says this gospel, Amen. This the gospel of miracles, the gospel of power, the gospel of holiness, the gospel that says take up your cross and follow me. That you're going to be persecuted for me. Yes. You'll be hated of all men for my name's sake. Yes. Yes. That gospel. Yeah. Not some church rigmarole. Right. But this gospel yes. of the kingdom will be preached in all the world. And that's got to happen. Every nation, kindred, tribe yes. has got to hear the gospel. Amen. And when that happens, yes, praise God, the end can come. Yes. Yes, Lord. No man knows the time. You know, he don't know, nobody knows the exact time except the Father Himself. And a lot of it is is probably movable. Are we going to obey Him? Are we going to let this word go to another people? Praise God. A lot, I think, depends. Sometimes, you know, it depends on what we do. A lot of what happens in your life. Is how God moves and all is up to you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's changeable. He said, No, I rather vacation. Mm. Praise God, this is my vacation. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking a 16 day vacation and, and hitting it for Jesus, and boy, it is gooder than grits. Yeah. It is so fine. Yeah. It is so fine yeah. to see people lit up and yeah. ministers. Yeah. Even ministers, brother, that have been burdened down and hurt and crushed and, and just drained. See them come alive and even come to some of these street meetings. And we had a, a brother Dave went over with uh, brother Joe and some others. And it was on fire one of those street missions. Yeah. Hey, God, you know, it's a lot of people are scared to go to those places. But Jesus, it got he's got ministers. And some of these guys used to go. But they don't do it anymore, but now they are. Praise Brother God. Phil said, man, he, he, he came to his church. He said he did just suck dry. He just drained and everything. But by the time we left, I mean, after we left, praise God. The, the, he said he woke up and he was just like free. And he came jumping into that, that same meeting that Brother Ron was got hit. He came and sang all the song service. Singing about the blood. Yeah. And his daughter and his wife. Yes. And I know they're kind of nervous about those places. But they came. And they were being resurrected. And this is the ministry. Your church will die. It'll be phony. If you don't go to the laws. Your church will die. You'll just be some people sitting around. Having a little social club. That's right. Praise God. That's the saith the Lord. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. When, when I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. You hear that? You hear it? Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, 
If he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you. I feel good tonight, today, whatever it is. I feel good because I'm delivering my soul. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Be the Lord. I feel good. I feel good. You know, the Holy Ghost is a comforter. Yes. But I, 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 I'm saying this. The Holy Ghost also is kind of a discomforter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you, praise God. He's convicting us. Yes. But you know, if it's the love of God, and I hope you feel this way, yes. the Lord's love, He doesn't condemn you. Yeah. He just convicts you. That's right. Praise God. He's not condemning you. Never. He's convicting you. Amen. And you say, you? Yes. Probably everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Us all. This is what we've got to do. Yes, Lord. This is our job. God gave you a job. Mm. Hallelujah. Praise God. Therefore, O thou, o thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel, Speak ye, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how should we then live? Praise God. Okay, I think that's it. I think that's all I'm going to say. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I'd like to pray for your eyes. Thank you, Jesus.